Don, you've spoken several times about this team's maturity and, and able to handle the moment. How do you think they'll be able to handle this one going forward? I don't know. But we talked about that in the locker room, that you know this can't really have any um, bearings on how we move forward. Because we said whether we won or lost, you know, all of our – you know, all of our goals are still in place. Uh, I'm happy that our team won. I'm happy for, I mean, a lot of reasons. I mean, this team, this current team, our former players who have uh, um, not been this lucky to, to win a game against UConn, I mean, 18,000 fans. I mean, if you look on social media, they took off work. You know, they came from different states. Um, and the ones here just really rallied everybody. And it's, it's, it's you know, I was, I was, I'm, I'm happy for them. I mean, because they they cheered loud. They were proud. I mean, they wanted this uh, for us probably on the, in the same breath that we wanted it for us. And you know, when it's genuinely um, felt that, when it's when we we felt that in a genuine way. Yeah, going off of that, for you personally, when the final buzzer sounded, what were your kind of your emotions going through your head? Well, the time couldn't take off quick enough for me. That's one. Um, two, I'm, I'm just relieved. Um, not, not because, I mean, there was a whole lot of pressure. I mean, it is pressure to win every single game. Um, but when you think about, you know, the, the former players, you think about the current players and what it would look like if we lost a game. I didn't want them to feel that. I didn't want 18,000 people to feel that. So, you know, I, I felt relieved in that. We, we got it done, and it made so many other people happy. And then uh, Aaliyah Boston shooting five threes. You guys <laughs> made eight total. I get, how much was that an emphasis going in uh, as part of the game plan? I mean, it wasn't an emphasis going in. Um, it's something that we've been working um, up until this point, and I just felt like we could not get her the ball in the paint. And if we weren't going to get her the ball in the paint, let her step out. Let her shoot a little bit. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe if we loosened it up a little bit, she can get it. But it never really loosened up. I thought Adola did a really good job on Aaliyah when she was in the paint. Um, I mean, we just got it out. I, I just thought that Ty you know, was a difference maker. When you have a, a senior point guard that you know that's lost, you know, to that team three times, um, she wanted to win, and her performance. Uh, um, was every indication of that. Don, you have played in so many, in front of so many huge electric crowds. Where does tonight's <laughs> rank for you in, in your career? I mean, it's the most current one, so I'm going to say this is the best one. <laughs> um, you know, but we won a lot of games in this gym. Uh, we won the regular season SEC championship here, um, which was really great. Um, but, but this was kind of a little bit different and special in its own right because we haven't, we haven't beat a team like UConn ever. Um, and you could hear every single person in this arena wanting us to do that. And, you know, so that's why it's kind of etched um, at the top of the list at this moment. Yeah. Coach, your team has played a lot of big opponents and they've met the challenge every single time. But tonight, <clears throat> did you learn anything about your team that you didn't already know with the way they played tonight? I mean, the only thing I learned is they, they, they didn't play the tradition of UConn. They didn't, probably unlike other teams where, you know, you look and see how many national championships they've won. Um, you look at how many times we, we lost to them. I mean, they just played the team that was out there. And they didn't flinch. They didn't flinch. They, didn't, they just played, you know, Crystal Dangerfield. They played Megan Walker. They played, you know, Olivia Nelson Odota. Um, Maka Rock, they just played the people that were there and they never thought about anything other than, you know, what we had to do to win. Don, you almost never, I, I can't imagine you went into this game thinking, okay, we're going to hold UConn to two points in the first quarter. What did you think of that defensive effort and what does that say about how locked in you guys were at the start of the game? Yeah, I, I would have never imagined that. Um, I thought we probably got back door ten times just, just because we would have um, just sped them up and um, got out of a uh, position. Um, but I, I knew that if we were able to play the type of defense that we've been playing all season long, that we would have some disruption, not, not disruption to the, point, to, the, to the form of two points in the quarter. Did you have a question? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go 
Just what were you able to do to get Kiki going in the second half? It seemed like she struggled a little bit in the first. I mean, we just got her the ball. I mean, when the you know when the game got a little bit tight, um, we wanted the ball in her hands or, or or Ty's hands, and Ty did a great job at finding her. Coach, this team has played so many ranked opponents this year, and, and the freshmen really kind of looked comfortable today. How much did you kind of see their comfort level just kind of being relaxed in the moment and really not focusing on the magnitude of how big this game was? I mean, the freshmen got plenty of practice in, in playing a big game. So, you know, this wasn't, you know, this was another big game. So um, it, it's always um, interesting to see how they'll come out, you know, how they'll, you know, how they'll approach it. But it's it's been the same, you know, the preparation for each game has been the same. So, you know, if they played any differently, um, it would be shocking at this point because, you know, they, they, they just stay true to form. What, uh, are you surprised about what happened? You, you know your team and you know how they prepared. Are you surprised at what went down tonight? No. And when did you realize that this could be this special of a team? I mean, I, I just, we just, you know, we, <laughs> every, every day that we wake up, it's just like, you know, you, 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 you kind of wait for them to, you know, you kind of wait for them to break a little as a, just as young people, um, just meeting the freshmen. Um, but you look at Ty, you look at Kiki. I mean, they are they are playing and they're leading at a an incredible um, way. So you know, if they continue to lead and our freshmen continue to follow, um, it's already special to me, really, because we don't have to do anything besides basketball. We don't have to worry about classes. We don't have to worry about you know curfew. We don't have to worry about any of the stuff that most coaches probably have to worry about. I mean, our players are policing each other in the dorm. So that's a, you know, that gives us great comfort to just know that we got great character um, kids that they just want to win. So that makes it pretty special. Tamara. Coach, the way that you opened the half with all the three three pointers, what was the plan coming into into the second half? Um, well, we, we were just as coaches talking about what, you know, what's been working. You know, we got a couple of plays that have been working. I got Aaliyah in the position to score a little bit closer to the basket. Um, I mean, we just wanted to take whatever they gave us. But we wanted it, you know, generated from what what Ty saw out there on the floor. And I thought Ty did a great job of just managing the game. She knew when to shoot it. She knew when to pull it back. She knew who the ball, you know, who should shoot it. And that's just, you know, a – a seasoned point guard, you know, that if you look at, and I'm going to say this, if you look at the mock drafts, they don't even have her, you know, talked about as being a first rounder in the WNBA. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. You know, so if if other people aren't going to write the narrative, then I have to say it because she's, she's showing every, she's showing everybody around the country what she's made of. It's an exciting win, but you also are back here on Thursday against yeah. Auburn. How difficult is it to get your team to move on emotionally pretty quickly after a game like this? Um, well, we have off tomorrow. So, I mean, they got a chance to, you know, decompress a little bit. Um, just, I mean, we'll have one day to prepare for Auburn. That's something that's a little bit new and different for us. But um, as, you know, as coaching as long as I've coached, rest is sometimes equally as important as getting out there on the floor. And I just think that resting um, after, you know, our, our you know our starters had to play heavy minutes. So we're going to rest them a little bit and, and refocus and try to get ready for Auburn. Coach, speaking of those uh, heavy minutes, Ty played 40 minutes tonight. Was that a part of the game plan or was that just Ty was really feeling it and you were like, okay, yeah, you can play this much? Um, I mean, I, w I was trying to steal a few seconds between – Quarters where if it was 20 seconds on the shot clock, we take her. I mean, on the clock, take her out, let her get that 20 seconds and the timeout. But she looked at me, she was like, Don't take me out. And like a good coach, I didn't take her out. I mean, she looked, she looked, um, she looked comfortable. She looked like 
You know, she wanted to be in control of the game for 40 minutes. Uh, Coach, going back to what you were just saying about Ty not, you know, really getting the buzz in terms of like mm -hmm. draft um, looks, what do you feel like kind of contributes to that? Because she's on a lot of like mid season award lists. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, part of it is we're the number one team in the country and you, you got to look at that. Um, just different talks of uh, out there on social media. I watch, I look at social media, but none of them from the summer to now has her as a as a first round draft pick no nobody and I, I find that very hard to believe because I mean she's a consummate point guard she's gonna run your show you know she's highly intelligent um, she she knows when to shoot it she knows she knows the plays she expresses herself out there she makes sure everybody is where they need to be um, she can shoot the ball I mean she's got She's got an incredible skill set along with being highly intelligent. Do you feel like you guys are kind of a little kind of underrated for her to be doing all of that and still not get that kind of buzz? Are we as as a team? Yeah. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, some a lot of people have us as the number one team in the country. Some people don't. Um, you know, but we what what we can do is just continue to to win. And that's that's how you that's how you get your questions answered is to continue to win and tie, you know, is gonna continue to do what she does. She's not one that's gonna boast and brag about her. But when I feel like the narrative isn't giving her a just due, that's when we have to speak up and, and, and help write the narrative a little bit better. Don, your your kids play the game the right way. They're good role models. I noticed tonight a lot of high school teams had come. Talk a little bit about how your program, what the impact you think it has on women's basketball in the state of South Carolina. Huge, huge. I mean, um, I, I think Susan Walvius did a great job at at getting South Carolina where it needed to be as far as um, they went to the new eight. Um, so there was some buzz about women's basketball. And then when we came, <clears throat> we just tried to corner the market here. We tried to make it so every AAU coach, every high school coach, every, everybody got a chance to come on our, our campus, whether it's on a, you know, for a game or for camp, or just come visit. We'll show them around. Um, I think because of those relationships that we forged, um, every, every little kid growing up wants to be a Gamecock. And that's how you have to grow your program. You have to have, you know, every single person wanting to be a Gamecock. We know that's impossible, but we certainly want the best ones to represent our, our program. Greg? Talking about Ty so much, is this, you think, her most dominant, best performance of her career so far? Um, I mean, it's current. <laughs> so, um, I mean, she had no turnovers. I know that that is a, a key um, stat for her when she looks at a stat sheet. Um, she was uh, pretty efficient out there on the floor. Um, I mean, I I thought her will. And with Ty, sometimes she gets a little tired and she has mistakes when she's tired, but she never tired today. So I, w I would say overall this is probably her most complete game statistically and mentally. Yes. You talk about with girls wanting to grow up and be Gamecocks. Is it kind of weird tonight to have that with UConn for so many years, people wanting to grow up and be Huskies, whereas you're in a position now to have girls want to grow up and be Gamecocks? Oh, well, the difference is every, every South Carolinian wants to be a Gamecock. Every kid in the country wanted to go to, to UConn, so it's a little bit different. Um, you know, but you know, for, for us, it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know. It's... I do think we do things the right way. I do think, you know, the the players that want to be here in South Carolina really understand what our coaching staff is about. Okay, and that is we're disciplined people. We we run our we run our our program in a disciplined way. You know, like, you know, it is a pecking order. You know, no no one's gonna make. No young person is going to make decisions for our program. I'm going to make decisions for our program. And sometimes that's not always the case in other programs. And I hear our kids talk about 
other 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 players at other programs talk about us like we don't want to go there because she's so strict she's this she's that and honestly I don't want to coach kids who aren't who don't want to be disciplined who don't want to have rules I'm a rules pro I love rules I do because it gives me something to, a guide to work with um, if you're able to just do whatever you want to do at some point you know you're not going to be as successful so um, I like who we have on our team. I like the fact that they have great parents. So when we recruit, we look at parent, the parent-child relationship. And if they're disciplined, if, they, if they're running their households, we love that. If a young person's running their household, you don't have a shot as a coach. You don't have a shot. So, you know, I, I love where our program is, is they, we're able to, you know, it runs itself in that you got leaders who understand what we're about and we don't have to, you know, we have to go over to the dorms. We never get called over there. Um, Ty, Kiki, and everybody else, they're just pretty good citizens when it comes to making right choices. Chris. After tonight, where's the Kool-Aid? Is it on the table? Is it in the glass? <laughs> um, New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans. I will. I will. I will have a big jug of it. I'll bring it to. I'll pass it out <laughs> if we get to New Orleans. Anything else for Coach Daly? Thank you all. Thank you.